So we're going to look at what foods go into what pot and that is going to be the determining factor to what stove you're going to buy. Now, if you're new to hiking, trekking, wild camping, weekend camper, fell walking, this is going to be right up your street. Because if you're new to it, this will set you down the road of how you want to go with your cook set, how you want to go with your food, and what size pot you're going to need. We can have a look at chunky old pots why I would carry one. We could have a look at something like this. A military style cook system like that. Why I would choose that. These kind of systems here. And we want to look at what alternatives for the same thing are there. I think I'm just about done other than this which might be one of my favourites. While I've got this little one out, we'll have a look at the means to heat the food with what food I'm going to put in here. This is 500 mil pot. It's not very big. It could certainly heat water. I could certainly do a dehydrated food with it, but it's not what this particular one is for fold out handles homemade lid it's the GSI Glacier now for me a little micro stove like that and a can of gas will do me I know I've got 16 boils in there if I'm only out for the night I'm no way gonna get through 16 boils if I'm even two days is eight boils a day so it's plenty of drinks and plenty of food. One little can like that takes me through two days easily. Mostly I use this for pastas and then I can use it for the oatmeal, your porridge in the mornings. Now there is a lid for this, I just haven't bought it with me. I could use that other lid, but it wouldn't be lightweight. Why should it be? lightweight at all because some people like lightweight tracking so a titanium spork a titanium 500 mil pot all lightweight and the lightest weight stove I could make is this however the fuel for it is not light because it's liquid I'm not putting pasta in this one this is just a water boiling container and that is all it is for because this is for dehydrated foods and as you can see I have tried actually putting food in that like a pasta and it scalded the bottom of the titanium if you're using titanium never put food straight into it but for now it goes on the little mat here so remember, things like pastas and things where food is touching the bottom of your cup, stainless steel, titanium, it's just a water boiler. Don't put food in that. Which brings us to the food. Let's have a look what I have in here. This is dehydrated food. I did it myself, I bought a dehydrator. This is chicken tikka and rice so i got a chicken tikka from a can probably and a pre-cooked rice i put it in the dehydrator overnight and then vac sealed it that there lives with this pot here let me move that out the way the way i like to do it is one of them coffee bags that has the metallic silver on the inside the mylar 
or whatever material that is cut open the contents put them in the bag boil the water put it in the bag and this is sealable so now I wait a few minutes and although that is good enough because it's silver reflective I've built a bubble sleeve also and as you can see it's a lot more compact I like that but I'm not into dehydrated foods but that is what I would do so that goes with that you only need a lightweight titanium pot if you are doing dehydrated foods so that's with that what would I do with that as we have discussed we've got a pasta I can put a soup with that pasta and my porridge oats nice and thin doesn't weigh a lot so that's breakfast sorted and there's my lunch and like I said if I wanted to put some kind of biltong with that or jerky with the pasta I can and I like to put peanut butter with my porridge oats there so that is lunch and breakfast look how small and lightweight that is it's enough for me that and that is the kind of stove I would have for that so it's all to do with the type of food your pot and your stove rather than having a preference for a stove the next one I'm coming to is a skillet pan this is by Jet Boyle and what have I got inside again this can be also used as a multi-purpose unit this is a boil in the bag from British Army ration pack that is chocolate pudding and chocolate sauce and what you do put it in cover it full of water and get a stove under that for about seven minutes and that's my dinner or my lunch because you can get pastas you can get soups puddings look out for these pre-cooked meals now that's my favorite thing to do so that will also do bacon sausage egg the kind of real cooking i like throw a steak in that tomatoes mushrooms asparagus in the morning do your, your breakfast in it do my lunch in it i could actually only rely on that if i wanted another option there same kind of idea as the skillet is the canteen it's not army issue or anything it's a knockoff a horrible little thing but same kind of thing that is chunky chicken and vegetable soup lie that flat into there cover it with water bring it to a boil that's boiling the bag cooking which brings me to the next stove for jet boil inside I have a coffee making kit the stove for it so everything travels inside the fuel for it and just like that there it performs the same task so I can take my soup or my beans or whatever I'm having from the British Army ration pack put it into the flash like that you can see it is the right size half fill stove on heat up six seven minutes performs the same duty as that to be honest but that is what it is for so many many years ago the jet boil was invented and it didn't have this regulator on it had a much smaller one and i still have it somewhere um gas in that in i've got coffee making kits not a necessity or anything lid 
and it is designed for ration pack food and they just have tons of it now regarding a sleeve or a pouch for it i'll see if i can dig that other one out it is the shape and size it is because it has to accommodate a ration pack it is the shape and size it is because it has to fit in the standard british webbing utility pouch that is why it is the size and shape it is period for ration pack food i just happen to have a different shape pouch one i prefer and it fits that so anyone who says why are you using the jet boil in future if you've been sent to this video now you know it's for ration pack food and i couldn't do a ration pack in a titanium pot because that is not what it's for now if you are doing freeze-dried or ration pack or pastas then you've got a better idea now of what you will need for it so there's my lightweight for oh, sugar's gone so there's my lightweight titanium that would suit um, dehydrated there that suits pastas and things like that this although I can use this for ration pack cooking the skillet I can do everything with this which is part two can I do everything with that this one is also a jet boil but it's a lot bigger than the flash it's still a litre but it's a different shape it is smaller and or not as tall should I say but wider so why would I want to use something like that real food I am no longer a long distance trekker I like weekend camping so I can stop off at a shop get myself like I said before um, a tin of curry or chili con carne a rice like that and that is big enough to cook that I can open the tin put it in cook straight on the bottom so the food is touching the actual pan which you can't do with the titanium it's much bigger than this one here which I use just for pastas so this can do breakfast lunch an evening meal but it won't do a fry up can't fry sausage bacon and egg in there so it's obvious really isn't it that you have the right size and shape and style of cook pot for your requirements whether that's cooking real food or just out pre-cooked out of a tin i can also boil veg with that i haven't so far but i'd love to give that a go i think we just about covered all the aspects there but this is the bag i might consider for one of the setups so where should we go not the flash um let's try this pot here which is the minimo by jet boil this is the one that can do your breakfast your evening meal and your lunch good all-rounder but won't do a fry up fits in the pack nicely with enough space left over there on the left for your meals your pastas and your porridge oats your oatmeal I could put wet food in does wet food really nice because it's a jet boil so I can pretty much do everything with that pot other than a fry up so it will do something like this which is just add hot water albeit it's overkill it's too heavy the correct pot would be a titanium for that because it's light and the aim of the game would be you're a lightweight tracker 
but that's a sleeve for that or a pouch this one here is going to be great for my skillet I already have a windshield now this did come in a velvet bag but this putting it in a ziplock bag reduces friction makes things a lot easier get things in and out I have room left over in there for a fold up drinks cup and a brew set a spork and some kind of food I haven't decided what food that would be but maybe that kind of pouch just sat on top of your pack like that takes up no room at all just need to pop a stove in there so what kind of stove could I put in that I could put my cat wicking stove that runs on alcohol or methylated spirits this is one I'm going to use now get a brew on Just choose a pot to do the brew what shall we use um, well let's choose the titanium and I won't use the little back stove like that I'll use the cat stove or shall I yeah use cat stove it doesn't go with it so this video is solely about putting the right stove with the right style of cooking so I'll use my water boiler come cup titanium this contains 500 millilitres half a litre enough for let's see 500 divided by 30 is the amount of days I would have I've got too much in that never mind there you go that is bloomed which is why I like these homemade stoves a lot better than Trangia stoves, no bloom time. Putting a lid on that is only going to prevent debris and evaporation on any pot. So rather than dig in the pack and dig myself a lid out, I'm just going to leave it like that. The reality of a long weekend is 500 mil. So when you see people with a little stove like I've got here or smaller, like I have in a pack, their fuel bottle is barely enough for two maybe three boils and I've got to be honest my stove is on the go a lot more than that 500 mil divided by 30 which is 30 um, mil per burn that's the amount of days I have and I can't do it in my head <laughs> but I do have a goodle finger here and I point it and it will give me how many days that will provide for me that big bottle that's more like it that's a lot of days at four burns a day so that would be 30 mil per burn in a 500 mil bottle which is 500 divided by 30 giving me the amount of days out i have at four burns so um, i'll put the calculation here because I have my magic goodle finger and warm up my goodle finger 30 mil four times a day 500 in that little red flask that's how many days I can have out I think I might dig out the windshield for that now for a faster boil you're better off with a windshield than you are with a lid because we've already done lids on lids off is it quicker watch the feature yourself it is a lot of fun it's definitely a lot of fun to film and the links in the description but an interesting one rolling about in my head is a windshield is probably more beneficial than the lid for a faster boil and I'm going to choose two different sizes tall and short 
and see if that makes a difference as well because I've got it in my head tall windshield is going to be quicker than a pot with a lid on without a windshield and I can't wait to do that I think we'll do that in a couple of weeks time there I am at a full boil and I need to save some of the fuel have some three in one here which is sweetener coffee and creamer this here is the cat wicking stove meant for the GSI glacier hand touch in seconds unlike uh, a Trangia now I think I might put the cat stove actually with the skillet let's put that in there so every pot has a different type of food for that pot it's even going to be pre-cooked boil in the bag pre-cooked tins that I can just pour in they can be dehydrated like mountain house or you can do your own and that is a just add water affair you can go pretty lightweight with that you could choose to actually do the cooking where the food is touching the bottom of your pan such as the jet boil minimo tin of curry in that mix in some rice all pre-cooked just needs heating up for camping if I'm only doing pastas and things like that and oatmeal the GSI glacier I can have food touching the bottom of the pan there because it's stainless steel unlike this which is titanium don't have food touching that it's just a water boiler this um, moving on the skillet I can stop off at a shop get bacon sausage eggs I can fry them in that for lunch an omelette at night I can even boil up some veg and do a steak it's pretty multifaceted that skillet the jet boil minimo is a good all-rounder it's heavy but you know it's going to be worth it if you like real cooking or you just want to be lazy get a, a tin of chili con carne curry plonk it in with water and heat it that way so if you are new to kind of camping or trekking you can now decide for yourself before you go out and buy what style of cooking are you going to do are you going to stop off at a shop and get raw ingredients are you going to stop off at a shop and get pre-cooked in a tin are you going to go onto an auction site and buy a crate of pre-cooked ration packs are you going to buy a dehydrator and dehydrate all the foods you like and aim to go lightweight are you going to be the kind of person who has porridge oats in the cupboard and pastas and would kind of like to keep it simple like that so now you've seen a stove for each of them and the pot for each of them because I'm not sponsored I won't beg you to subscribe and hit the like button because it is of no importance to me on a personal level whatsoever if you watch or you don't but I really do appreciate people coming here of their own volition but unfortunately it does cost me money out my own pocket to make these videos so a super thanks would help a lot so until next time take care of yourself and I'll see you out there happy trails